Welcome to the MaxPass dilation balloon in service. Today, we will review the proper setup and use of MaxPass. This is an educational program designed to assist in the proper use of the MaxPass dilation balloon. It is not designed to replace the information in the instructions for use that accompanied the device when it was purchased. This presentation is a supplement to the information contained in the Instructions for Use, or IFU. All the material in the IFU should be reviewed prior to operating this device. To start, we will assemble the T-piece to the inflator handle. Remove the T-piece from the package and thread it onto the end of the inflator catheter. Ensure the locking switch on the inflator is in the left position so we may be able to fill the inflator. The inflator can be filled with normal saline, contrast, or a mixture of saline and contrast. The inflator packaging can be used as a basin for the fluid. A syringe filled with fluid may also be attached to the T-piece. Ensure the locking switch on the inflator is in the left position and draw back the plunger until the inflator is filled with 12 milliliters of fluid. Next, we will remove air from the inflator. Turn the inflator upright, ensure the locking switch is still in the left position, and slowly advance the plunger until all of the air is expelled from the inflator and catheter. Now we will prepare the MaxPass dilation balloon. First, remove the protective sleeve from the distal end of the balloon. We will need to flush the guide wire port on the balloon. Next, thread the balloon port on the balloon catheter to the inflator T-piece on the inflator catheter. In order to properly inflate the balloon, we need to remove all of the air from the balloon catheter. To do this, we will pull the plunger all the way back and lock the switch to the center position. Notice the air from the balloon has been drawn into the inflator. Before releasing air from the inflator, we need to turn the switch on the T-piece or stopcock off to the balloon. When the stopcock is switched off to the balloon, you will hear the vacuum in the inflator release. Now we will turn the locking switch on the inflator back to the left. We will bleed off the remaining air in the inflator through the side port on the stopcock. Slowly advance the plunger until fluid begins to come out of the side port on the stopcock. Once all of the air is removed, switch the side port of the stopcock to the off position as shown. Load the balloon over a 0.035 inch or smaller guide wire and down the scope into the patient. Once in the bile duct, radio opaque markers on the balloon will guide where the balloon is located. The markers should be placed distal and proximal to the stricture. Now that the balloon is in position, we can inflate. Flip the locking switch on the inflator to the center position. Slowly rotate the plunger clockwise to inflate the balloon. Rotate the plunger until the pressure in the balloon reaches 6 atmospheres. You will need to periodically adjust the plunger to maintain 6 atmospheres during dilation. Once dilation is complete, turn the locking switch back to the left position. Pull the plunger all of the way back resting the end of the plunger against the side of your hand, as shown here. With your free hand, turn the locking switch back into the center position. This will lock the plunger in place and keep the balloon in continuous vacuum. Remove the balloon from the patient and scope. The balloon and inflator handle are to be disposed of after use.